Hello boys and girls, it is Bible time. And in Bible time today, we are going to learn about how the Bible was written thousands of years ago, but God preserved it so that we can read its words today. Um, but before we get to that, let's pray. Hands in the air, hands in our hair, hands ready for prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we have access to it. We can read it and we can learn from it. Thank you for just keeping it safe all these years so we can just learn more about you and learn more about ourselves through it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls. So we're going to learn about how God's word, um, well, we learned about how it was made, right? How it was written. God inspired um, holy men to write the write his words down. Okay, so let's review real quick. Was the Bible written by man? Did the words come from man? No, they physically wrote it down, but the words were from God, right? So God wrote the Bible. Okay, good. All right, so we're going to learn about how God has kept his words safe. Like I said before, the Bible was written thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago, but we still have it today. I mean, that's pretty crazy. If someone else had written a book thousands of years ago, I don't think we'd be able to keep track of it as well as people have kept track of the Bible. Let's learn a little bit about how that happened and how God has kept his word safe. The books of the Bible were probably first written on something called papyrus. Can you say papyrus? It's kind of a fun word, papyrus. Now, let me tell you a little bit about papyrus. This was a water plant that grew along the Nile River and in areas of a place called Palestine. Ancient Egyptians, remember the Nile River is in Egypt, they cut thin strips of the papyrus and they crisscrossed them. So they kind of weaved them together, crisscrossed them, and pressed them into writing sheets. Often, several pale yellow sheets were joined together to make huge rolls of writing material from 10 to 30 feet long and about nine inches high. Egypt's dry climate made preservation of the fragile papyrus possible for hundreds of years. The modern word Bible actually comes from the Greek word byblos, which means papyrus or book. So the first um, books of the Bible were probably written on this very thin, very fragile paper-like thing called papyrus, all right? But they were able to be preserved for years because of the warm climate in Egypt. Now, papyrus does not last very long. It, it is able to be preserved, but it's very, very fragile, which means that it's, it'll break very easily. And it rots when it gets wet, so you can't let it get wet. That's why when it's in a drier climate, then it can last longer, but it's still so thin, it's very fragile, easy to break. But God's word still exists thousands of years later after it was written. Wow, that almost sounds like a miracle. Hmm. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 to, through 25, it says that the word of God will endure forever. God has kept his word safe these thousands of years so that people in all ages would know what, we, what he has said. People in ancient times did not have machines to help them make copies. So today we have a copy machine or a printer or these really cool kinds of like book printers that can put all these cool pages together and put all the words on the pages. We have those today, but people in the past time did not have that. Jewish scribes and others would carefully copy the Bible by hand. Then when they finished their work, they checked it to be sure that there were no mistakes. Being a scribe was an important job. Copies would wear out and would need to be replaced. So they couldn't, they didn't have computers. They couldn't type something up, save it on their computer. And then if they lost a copy of it, they couldn't just like print it all out again. They had to rewrite what things were saying. When a, when a copy of a page was getting worn out, they would have to copy it word for word with no mistakes. The scribes were busy making new copies. The scribes helped keep the word of God safe for people today. Boys and girls, for you to kind of understand how tricky a scribe's job is, I want you to try copying this week's memory verse. You can look at it on our um, memorization sheet, but I want you to try and copy it exactly like your handwriting has to be very neat, 
You've got to copy it exactly as it's written with no mistakes, okay? That can be very tricky. It takes a lot of time. So for them to have to do that with all the scriptures, that would take a really long time. So try doing it with just one verse, just this week's memory verse, and see how you do. The copies that the scribes made were in the languages of Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So I couldn't read them because I can't read any of those languages. But in AD, 1382, okay, we're in 2020, this was 1382, so this was a long time ago. John Wycliffe finished his English translation of the Bible. <gasps> I am so glad he translated the Bible into English, otherwise I would not be able to read it. Later in the 1500s, William Tyndale and Miles Coverdale worked on translating the Bible, so they worked on it too, on translating the Bible to English. After the printing press was invented, so a printing press is something that would print like newspapers or you could print um, pages for books on it. After that was invented, Bibles could be copied and published much faster. So people would have more access to a Bible. They were much bigger and heavier than Bibles today. So I have this Bible, which is pretty big and pretty heavy. Some of the ones that they had back then were even bigger and even heavier. But guess what? I also have a Bible right here on my phone. I have a Bible on my phone that I can read if I'm on the go. So Bibles can even fit on phones. And guess what? That doesn't add any extra weight to my phone. And some people have small Bibles that are just the New Testament. Some people have Bibles that are small it's the whole bible but the print is super tiny so it's not too big they've made all kinds of different shapes and sizes of bibles today however not everyone wanted the bible to be published in english how could they not want that the roman catholic church did not want anyone except its own leaders to be able to read the bible some of the men who worked to translate the bible into the everyday language were hated treated unfairly, hurt, and even killed. Sometimes their work was destroyed. So people, some people really didn't want them to translate the Bible to English. But because of their brave obedience to the Lord, most of the people of the world today can read the Bible in their own languages. The Bible isn't only written in English, it's written in Spanish and French and Swedish and trying to think of another language i can't think of Port portuguese it's written in every every language the bible has been translated into more than 1000 languages as you can see i can barely name four languages so but the bible has been translated into over a thousand that's amazing so so many people in the world who wouldn't have had, had access to a bible hundreds of years ago now do and can read it on their own most people all over the world are able to read God's message to man in his word that has kept that he has kept safe for his people. But there are still millions of people who do not have a copy of the Bible in their own language. Even though it's been translated into thousands of languages, there's still some that um, that the Bible has not been translated into. Also, people who do not have a written language, have no Bible. In English, we have, uh, English is a spoken and a written language, right? We write it, we can write it down and we can speak it. Some languages are only spoken. They don't have like an alphabet like we do, so they can write down, write down different things. So if someone speaks a language that is not a written language, they don't have a Bible. There are schools where people learn how to translate the Bible into languages, including languages that have never been written down. So there are a lot of people in the world, boys and girls, who are working to try and get people who do not have Bibles. They're trying to get their they're trying to get Bibles to them, or if they if their language doesn't have the Bible yet, they're trying to learn how to translate the Bible into that language. That is such important work, boys and girls, and I really hope that someday everyone can have access to God's word. So who made copies of the Bible during ancient times? Well, Jewish scribes and others. At first they were just making copies of the new of the Old Testament, right? Because that was the Bible that they had before, um, before we had the New Testament as well. Those were the scriptures that they had and they would just copy 
down, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, all those books of all 39 books of the Old Testament. And now who first translated the entire Bible into English? Ooh, do you remember his name? It was John Wycliffe. Wycliffe. Mm -hmm. And are there still people today who do not have the Bible in their own language? Yes, yes, there are. We need to keep praying. If we can't if we can't translate the Bible ourselves into these languages, we need to keep praying that people who do know those languages and do know Jesus can help with that. Now, what has happened to some people who have worked to translate the Bible into various languages that people speak? They have been hated, treated unfairly, hurt, and even killed, which seems crazy because you'd think that everyone would want to have access to the Bible, but some people didn't want others to have access to it. Now, boys and girls, what is your attitude toward the Bible? How do you feel about the Bible? I just want you to think about that. How do you feel about the Bible? Boys and girls, we should praise God that he has preserved and kept his word safe for so many years so we can read it. Boys and girls, sometimes life gets busy and we don't make time to read the Bible. That happens to me all the time. And um, I don't honor God's word as much as I, as I probably should. So boys and girls, I encourage you, try to take the time, even just like five minutes, and read something from God's word. It took a lot of people a lot of time to get our Bibles into English. So we should, because we should honor their hard work and also honor that God has kept his word safe for us for thousands of years so that we can read it. And I think you'll learn at least a little something, but probably a lot of something if you start reading God's word every single day. All right, boys and girls, so that is how God has kept our Bible safe and how we have an English Bible, which is very cool. And you guys are getting so good at your reading, you're going to be able to read it all on your own very, very soon. All right, boys and girls, I hope that you take some time today to take a look at God's Word and to read what it says and learn from it. Have an awesome day, boys and girls.